Welcome to Hair Blazers, the podcast where we empower you to disrupt the beauty industry, starting with your chair and your salon. You can focus on running your business and tune in here to find out how to keep it moving forward. I'm Colleen, the Director of Education and Business Development for the Verde Salon Group here in Winnipeg. And I'm Roberto, owner of Verde Salon and Innovate Institute Winnipeg. We're your hosts. Today, we're joined by Tom Kuhn, the founder and CEO of Cunity. Tom, thanks for joining Tom, us today. Tom, welcome. Thank you for being here. I'm honored to be your guest today, as well as your listeners. Wonderful. So I figured just to start, you could tell us a little bit you know, about yourself, your journey, and how Cunity came to be. You know, I my path was one that um, I guess can be summed up with a passion for pairs. Uh, I always like to see the universe as as um, as two separate uh, areas that somehow come together. And really, when you think of Cunity, that is the idea behind Cunity. Uh, I really was grounded as a financial professional. I was a CPA in Canada. I believe you call it a chartered public accountant. I was a CPA here in the uh, in the states for 13 years, and. Uh, I focused primarily on small, creative entrepreneurial businesses. Uh, most of the accountants I worked with really didn't want to work with small, creative entrepreneurial businesses because they had they didn't necessarily have the have empathy with the creative process and the heart that goes into it. The big idea behind Cunity is how can we make um, things like financial management, financial wellness, financial literacy not scary um, to creative professionals. I think one of the things that Cunity does very well is it makes it accessible um, because it is hard to find. I remember when um, I started out, I had some financial background in the salon industry or salon business, and um, and it definitely wasn't enough. Uh, and going out there and trying to find it just wasn't readily available. And you guys have done such a great job of that. Um, congrats to your success because it's been absolutely amazing being being a part of that journey with you and, and watching it. Um, and I really find that the tools that Community puts in place really makes the processes, um, I think, clear, structured, mm-hmm. um, as simple as they can be. Uh, and it's definitely done a lot for salon owners and for our industry as a whole. So thank you so much. Yeah, I'll say it's definitely been a game changer for our business. Mm-hmm. And, and not only in what you've kind of put out there for us, but also the community that comes from it. Like we have met so many unbelievable people that we never would have met if we hadn't worked with you. You know, there's, um, I think five different words in the English language that ends with the word unity. And two of them really embraces, I think what we're all about. One is community. uh, And the other one is opportunity. At about 13 year mark, I joined the professional beauty industry primarily well in distribution. And that began my journey into understanding that I also could teach and educate. So in distribution, I created a course and I really loved the teaching aspect. I really loved being able to take these things that felt so scary or overwhelming um, and, and making them approachable and having, having empathy, I think, more than anything else. So the community is really, really important. and the community through the years has had its different iterations. We had an ambassador community when we first started out with Incunity, but understood that we needed to have more than just ambassadors. We've been very fortunate to be able to find people like Jody Ohama, for example, um, who's who really um, uh, does a great job working with small businesses like yours. And the, um, uh, the name behind Cunity uh, is actually brings this, you know, the, these pairs together. I, I mentioned that I like to see things in pairs. So um, my name, Tom, uh, actually means twin. I live in the Twin Cities and I'm a Gemini. <laughs> and, uh, you know, to me, I always wanted to be at least a double threat. So I wanted to be really, really good at more than one thing. After running a salon group here in the Twin Cities, which some of you may have heard of, it's called Jute. I wanted to go beyond running a company with 400 people, see if we can get to 4,000 people, 40,000, 400. I wanted to go bigger. I wanted the reach to be wider. And that really could only come through being in the education business. 
The very, very first person to officially get involved in CUNITY was a graphic designer. And um, uh, I had this just fascination with graphic design. And if we could really provide really beautiful graphic design, not this, you know, cartoony type stuff, but really beautiful design, marry that with really great content. Community was born in a graphic design studio, literally. Uh, today, uh, my home office, actually, which is where I spend most of my time these days, um, used to be a graphic design studio. The previous homeowner here ran his graphic design studio right out of the space that I'm in right now. So I think that if you're really to understand the passion that I have or the passion or the, the beauty industry, what I think really makes for a wonderful combination, it's really how you marry great design, great content, space of financial wellness, financial literacy, and financial management. Yeah, the, the passion is obvious. Yeah. That's what you guys do. So we're users of those tools and they work so well. And you're right. The graphic design piece does play a huge role in it because it didn't exist before. Um, but when you're talking about passion, about community and what it means to you, opportunity and community, um, obviously this is something that's been poured into this last project that you guys have done. And, and that is the Pro Beauty Compensation Study, which was ever so important. Tell us a little bit about the compensation study why you did it, why it's important, and why it's going to matter. Most things that we've done within CUNITY has been, has been because we were called to do it. It wasn't necessarily that we were thinking way out in the future and, you know, like the 2 to 10 project uh, that we created, which, which is a group of multi-location salons. It happened because we we're literally asked and invited to do it. The compensation study was not on our plan for 2022. It was the farthest thing from uh, my mind that we would get involved in the big data project. We did it, we did it because it needed to be done. Uh, the story about the profession of cosmetology, and it's really based upon a lot of fiction, not fact. The pro-beauty compensation study uh, happened very organic in stages, and cut to the chase, the bottom line is that uh, we recently did publish a full report uh, based upon a study of over um, uh, 3,400 W-2s, which is the, the annual earnings report that's filed with the U.S. government, and 330 locations. And what we were able to do is we were able to create data that would challenge some of the fictional stories um, that are out there about a field in cosmetology, findings um, were incredible. Uh, the findings suggest that in the U.S., uh, they report, the Bureau of Labor Statistics from the government reports that the average hairstylist makes $17.30 an hour. Um, our data showed that that number is about half of what we found. Uh, we found that the average hairstylist um, just compensation alone, I'm sorry, just earnings alone was more like $38 an hour. Compensation is other things that are of value to um, an individual in the workplace. Um, flexibility is a huge one. Uh, we found that uh, I believe it was 95% of salons offer flexibility. Um, we also found benefits. Uh, most of these companies, I think it was 90 plus percentage companies offered some form of benefits, not all more health insurance, but great benefits. We also measured things like um, training. So compensation, while it's nice to say we found the average paycheck and the average hourly rate was higher than what people normally think, we also were pleased to be able to say this is an amazing industry where not only can you make get a good paycheck, um, you also have the ability to flex into multiple different roles, usually with inside a company. So I, um, it, it, to be honest, it took my, it took over the second half of the year for me. Uh, I really had to make some big pivots. Um, but what happened is we did some early uh, versions of the compensation study. And then a lot of people said, we need more of this data. We need more of this data. But what I found is that this data is really starting to change the conversation in terms of what it really looks like to go into this industry.
And that's amazing. One thing I want to mention is this is in a, uh, a U.S. study. Currently, I know perhaps you might have um, some plans on working your way into Canada. However, either way, it's the same thing in Canada. And with it being so similar, Tom, it's, uh, it's definitely had an impact on, on what we do. Um, as a salon, the information is great. We, we grabbed the study the first day it came out, um, and it's a very robust study. Uh, so it definitely gives us a lot of insight for ourselves as an ownership team, as a management team, and as a stylist team to really share with them the opportunities that they have. Because um, sometimes they're just unknown, but also as a school owner, um, you know, breaking down those misconceptions of what the potential earning is, is, is uber important. I can't tell you how many times um, students or potential students have been derailed or deflected away from coming into the, uh, our industry because of the misconceptions of what you can make. And typically that comes from parents, it comes from significant others, it comes from friends. Um, and I can really appreciate um, actually having real data on it um, and being able to use that data to help people see and change a perception of what our industry is about, because it has been it has been a difficult road, um, you know, as far as the value of this industry or what the potential is with the industry, because the numbers just they weren't really speaking truth. So, well, and that's one thing whenever anyone asks, like if there's one thing you would want to change about the industry, it would be the misconceptions about this industry. For sure. And you feel like you're, you're like trying to beat down a wall. But now we actually have solid concrete evidence of how wonderful it actually is. What I realized is that there's just not a lot of great data in the beauty industry. There just really isn't, um, in particular workforce. It led us to really forming a new division within CUNITY, uh, which we call the CUNITY Institute. Now, why do we need a new division? Well, Many people early on question our motives. They thought we were doing this for marketing. They thought we were doing it to make money. And it was the farther from the truth. And we didn't, we didn't have a nickel come in. I mean, we, we worked on this nine months before a nickel, a sponsorship came in. Um, we didn't use it for marketing. I also wanted to make sure that those that are, um, many of our coaches are independent business owners. And we wanted to isolate the data from them. So... We created this division called the CUNITY Institute. And it, what really got me excited um, about that was to really create a reason why the CUNITY Institute, wanted, what does it stand for? And to me, the way we've described it is it's about economic empowerment. It's about empowering people to make better economic choices and have better economic um, success through two fundamental uh, avenues. One is through data, data that's easy to access, it's approachable. When you really marry the two, so if people are working on facts, not fictions, and the data is accessible and available, um, um, in particular, someone that may not be a data head, but then also have financial literacy, now we have economic empowerment. We empower people. And you know we're in an industry that's predominantly female. And um, I have a lot of passion for economic empowerment, especially for women. Uh, so the impact I want is that when people make decisions about a career, there's various forces that come at them. And these are going to be family, friends, peers, and classmates. You have centers of influence, teachers, guidance counselors. And then you have points of reference. A point of reference, for example, would be research publication, the government, social media. I really hope that these different influences um, that go into people making a career, whether it's to enter or stay in a career, is that they're really empowered to uh, help um, those that they're influencing make decisions that empower them in their lives. You know, I, I hope that in my social circles, when I now describe to people that, you know, you, you can enter this field with, it's, with a, a relatively small investment of time and money. Um, you can ramp up your earnings in a relatively short amount of time. The ability to be creative, that, that's a story that needs to be told. The story needs to be told that this is not a second tier career, and it's a career that really is a professional career, and really bringing the professional 
into the word professional beauty industry. That that's my hope. And you know, when I describe in my social circle, you know, the findings from the study, it's like, whoa, you know, I didn't realize that. So I really hope that many of these stereotypes really start to melt away. And this could be um, in the same conversation as many other fields that have a different level of esteem and that that the um, the workforce and the influences in the workforce um, could really have their eyes wide open based upon data, not stories. Um, you know, what? I just want to um, talk just a little bit more about that community piece, Tom. And, and you know, there is uh, an example I have that really showed how much you cared about um, the not just the industry, but the people in the industry. When uh, when COVID hit, um, at that point in time, we had um, some minimal um, exposure to community. We had taken some classes with you guys, um, but it was pretty top level. And when community hit, you had sent out an email that said, you know, we're going to do this financial class online um, to help you through this time. Um, which was amazing. But what was even more amazing is that you said, here's the value of this class. If you can pay it, great. If you can't, just pay whatever you can. And if you can't pay anything, then do that too. Um, and I really appreciated how supportive you were for all the people that were in the industry really struggling at that time. So I just wanted to say thank you for that. Um, and as far as everything you guys are doing, there's many places they can find you. We're going to ask you to hit that up. But as far as the events of concern, We've been to two to 10, mm -hmm. an amazing the program, the Phil, an amazing program. We'd highly recommend all of those, but why don't you tell all the people listening where they can find you, where they can get a hold of you and how they can get in touch with you. All the socials, you know, uh, usually under Cunity Inc, um, uh, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, how you can find me is, uh, I'll give you my email. It's tom.kuhn at cunityinc.com. That's Q-N-I-T-Y-I-N-C.com. Um, and I don't want to leave out um, light bulb moments. Wednesday mornings, I believe it is. I've had the opportunity to join yeah. some of those. Yeah, Wednesdays, uh, 10 a.m. Central Time, uh, we do a segment called Light Bulb Moments. I, I, it, it's, a, it's a live session. It's sort of a podcast. And what we do there is we look at issues and opportunities primarily in the financial area, but not just that. Certainly, uh, we always welcome people to tune into that. Tom, thank you so much for joining us and taking time out of your day today. My pleasure. I hope it was useful to your listeners. And thanks for having me. I so appreciate it. Always a great time. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate you. Thank you for listening. Remember to leave us a review, share with your team, and tune in for our next episode. Thank you again for listening. If you haven't already, <laughs> give me a sec. One sec, just give me like two seconds. Thank you again for listening. If you haven't already, please leave us a review, share with your team, and we look forward to you tuning in to the next episode.